Hey, a pleasant good afternoon, everybody. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Borick, a.k.a. Projo. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Trying to hit 130 by the start of next week at 125 right now. This is going to be a quick preview to the Philadelphia Phillies at Atlanta Braves series this time as the Phillies were able to beat the Braves in the series last time at home after and then beat the Mets. So they're coming in hot at 5-1, and one, and the Braves are coming in at 2-4. and four. I would say tonight, uh, 1-0, uh, we were coming in having a great first start. Morden struggling a little bit. The Phillies have the pitching uh, hand here. They have the advantage in the first game of the series. Troy Morden, you obviously cannot take for granted, though. Yes, he struggled in the regular season last year, and yes, he struggled in his first start this year. And obviously, he ain't getting any younger. He's 37 now, but he's still a very good pitcher um, when at his best. He had a 4.74 in the regular season, but then we saw him turn it on in the postseason last year. So he can still turn it on. You definitely can't take him for granted, but I would say just with how E e excuse me, not Eflin, the other Zach. Zach Wheeler is ascending, and it seems like Morden's kind of in this teetering period of his career where he really turns it on at times, but isn't always the same old Charlie. That's why I think the Phillies definitely have the advantage, and with how their bullpens do it, even away would have the advantage in this game. But we have to remember, too, so you don't go looking at your TVs like, oh my God, where's the game at 7 o'clock? These games start at 7.20 for Friday and Saturday, actually, an oddity um, in Atlanta. They're starting at 7.20. But I would say because of the advantage when it comes to wheels um, in this game, the Phillies are going to have the advantage. If you look at guys against Wheeler, um, Albie struggles against him. Camargo only has 20 at-bats and struggles against him. He has to try to get Freeman. Freeman torches him in 24 at-bats, 417. Um, Riley hasn't hit against him in only 10 ABs. Ozuna struggles against him in 13 ABs. Swanson's hitting under five, or under almost at point fifty as a point five three against Wheeler at 19 ABs. So Wheeler, other than against Freddie Freeman, faces the Braves pretty darn good. Um, where when it comes to Charlie Morton, Harper only has seven ABs, but is hitting five seventy one. Uh, there's not a big sample size here. Didi's hitting two eighty six, uh, being over in the American League at twenty one ABs, and Gene's hitting a cool three oh eight against him in twenty six ABs. So I think looking at those matchup numbers too, other than Freeman against Wheeler, that favors the Phillies too. And Wheeler coming in at this point of his career for ten K outing, not allowing any runs, more than off for struggling having five Ks. I think this favors the Phillies as they're going to put out in the first game as we go over the lineup. I predict them going to win the first game of the series I would say in this as we throw out the lineup is Andrew McCutcheon at left Reese Hoskins at first Bryce Harper batting third and right JT at catcher obviously batting fourth Boehm at third base batting fifth who's looked really good fielding I must say at third base making a couple great leaping catches and making some good crashing in plays as well D.D. Gregorius at shortstop batting sixth Gene Segura seventh at second base Hazley back in center field, the Purple Hayes at eighth, and then Zach Wheeler pitching, who's hitting 667 after having two RBIs. Maybe he can keep the hitting streak going as well in this game, but I think this game favors the Phillies. Um, I think Morden's going to bounce back, so I don't think it'll be pivot, like very, very hugely scoring, but I'll go 5-3 to three Phillies. Um, in this one, where it's probably going to be someone in the bullpen. I don't think we will give up more than two, and then somebody in the bullpen will give up that one extra run there. It, when it comes to the second game on Saturday, that's also a 7:20 Eastern start. I think that pitching matchup is definitely even. Uh, you got Eflin, who's really ascending, going against one of the best uh, youngsters who got a good first start as well, coming over the 180 ERA to Eflin's 1.29, seven strikeouts for Anderson to eight for Eflin in his first game. Um, it's weird with Eflin's numbers when it comes to the Brave. Acuna's hitting 267 against him in 15 at bats, but if he starts getting him out some, then his numbers are not too sweet against him. Where for Acuna, 267 even ain't that sweet. And then Albies is only hitting 200 against him in 15. Freeman's hitting 143 against him in 21. Ender and Ciarte, it's 286 and 14. And Swanson kills him the exact opposite of against the other Zach, Zach Wheeler. He kills Zach Eflin at 412 and 17 at bat. So he gets the greatest guy in Freeman and Albies. And then also pretty good Acuna at 267. If you get him out two times, then he's right back down to being in the low 250s, not in anywhere where you normally see Ron Acuna. Um, he's pretty good against this lineup, but then for some reason the middle of the road guys, and then the Dansby Swanson, the all-star guy, but not the Ozzie Albies, Freeman, and Acuna level, just a smidge tilt down from them. 
um, destroys him as well. So it's interesting his numbers against the Braves, but I think we're seeing an ascending Zach Eflin that's now fully proving he's a top three starter in a rotation. So I think putting that into consideration, he's going to come out a lot differently have a good game, probably be able to get those guys out um, that he struggled against in the past, like Swanson. Sandoval hit some 333, but that's in three at-bats, so that ain't no sample size. Um, but I think um, he'll be able to come out good. He gets Ozuna good in 14 ABs. He's only hitting in the low 100s against F1, so I think that's pretty much an even one. That game's going to be almost a 50-50 split for me. I really, honestly, looking at the matchup for that one... Um, can't make much of a prediction other than I think this game's going to depend on whose bullpen, because I envision Eflin and Anderson both having good starts, whose bullpen is going to step up the most and be able to take the icing on the cake. The Phillies has been good where the Braves has been good, but not as good early on. So I would favor the Phillies in that, but I'm not going to take them for sure. I feel like the Phillies are going to win two out of three in this series, where tonight they have a favor in the pitching matchup. I think they'll win tonight, and then one of these next two, which are kind of both 50-50 splits for me. Because the reason this third game on Sunday, which is a 7-0-8 start, is a 50-50 split, is you have Matt Moore trying to bounce back from having the first two good innings in his first start, and then struggling in the next two, uh, really battling through after having a struggle bunny fourth inning, and then really having to battle through or struggle bunny third inning, excuse me, and then really having to battle through and not be able to do it in the fourth, uh, but kept them in the game. You would obviously hope, and I would hope he hopes he can go at least five innings, and obviously does, I would think. And then Smiley coming off of a fairly solid start, coming in with a three ERA. But I think when it comes down to the bare bones, if Matt Moore is able to pitch like he did in spring training and Drew Smiley's able to kind of pitch like he continues to pitch now, which is usually like a hot, like a mid to a high threes, low four, that's almost an even matchup if Moore can kind of bounce back and show what he showed during spring um, rather than show what he showed in just two innings and then struggle bunny there. But we'll have to see. Um, there's no sample size really when it comes from Matt Moore with the Braves, so you can't really look at that, and there ain't really a sample size when it comes to the Phillies with Drew Smiley much either, so there ain't much to look at. But <clears throat> I do think this game's almost even too, so I feel like when it comes to this series, it's going to come down to, I think the Phillies have the favorable in the matchup in game one with Wheeler against Morton, so they have to win this game one to guarantee winning two out of three, in my opinion, and I think they will. And then the next two are kind of 50-50, uh, completely even on the scale split, I would say. Um, just because you got F1 Anderson, those are even starters. It's going to depend where the bullpen goes. And I would say more if he's able to bounce back is pretty much even with Drew as well. So that could go to a game that also goes to the bullpens earlier, where I would envision the Eflin Anderson start being games that they can go at least five, if not six, maybe even seven for those guys. And then it's who can step up in the last two innings for the bullpen. Where the Smiley and Moore start is more like who can step up for the bullpen in general. So I think those are 50-50 splits. I think the Phillies will win one of those two on Saturday or Sunday. And then take this first game to take two out of three in Atlanta. And then move into flying back to the East Coast to New York to face the Mets for four games starting at 7.10 p.m. on Monday. So this has been the Atlanta Braves versus Philadelphia Phillies series preview. I hope you all enjoyed the video. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Boric, a.k.a. Projo. Again, please like, comment, and subscribe at 125 now. Trying to get to 130 as soon as possible. I really appreciate your support. And also stay tuned for the series recap that hopefully I'll be able to get my good buddy and co-host Andrew on as well to do it when he's available to do the video. For that as well as the series preview for the Mets four-game series, the four-game bonanza we have against them next week. So have a great, safe, and pleasant week and weekend, everybody, and enjoy all the great baseball action. Peace out.